Hello and welcome back to the TCM YouTube channel for the fifth of our season previews for the eight women's regional size. It is the turn of Thunder and joining us today is Jack. First of all, how are you, Jack? I'm very well, thank you, Harrison. How are you? I'm good as well, thank you. Let's thank you. start by looking back at 2022 first. Seventh place in the Rachel Hero Flint and then third in the Charlotte Edwards Cup group. What did you make of the campaign for Thunder? Uh, I think it was a, an up and down year last year for Thunder. There's definitely some good points that we could build on, certain individual performances. But I think last year their needs probably wasn't as cohesive a year as they would have liked. You definitely could see that they were still building from the year before. And I think that is going to be something they're going to continually do. Um, I think when you look at last year, I think you've got the case of they were either very good uh, in the batting or very good in the bowling. Didn't seem to have a situation where they would be able to combine them both. And I think that's probably probably going on further on to what we'll talk about later, but that's their strength to look at for this year. Definitely, but I think let's look at some of the positives itself from the season last year. The captain, Aaron the Freckled, especially in that Rachel Hayes Flint, made 266 yeah. runs and average over 50. What did you make of her campaign? I think her campaign last year, especially in the Hayes Flint, was fantastic. She really was leading the team from the front. Um, some brilliant knocks last year, particularly kind of the her 91 against Lightning um, was a great knock. It really built up the, the team because then they'd lost quite a few early wickets of points as well. So she's quite a solid performance in the middle there. Um, and in particular, I would say her keeping as well. Um, for me, you know, I might upset a couple of people here, but for me, I still think she's the best keeper we've got in the country. I know a lot of people go with Amy Jones, and Amy Jones is very good and very strong. But I think in terms of pure keeping, I think Ellie is probably the better keeper in the country right now. On that note, can you see her playing for England at all this summer? Or just not because of the Ashes and the magnitude of the series? I, I, I would love to see her playing for England this summer. But if I'm honest, I don't see that happening. Um and really never say never. Um, it could happen uh, at some point. It would be interesting to see what they do after the Ashes. Um, when we've got Sri Lanka later in the year, it'd be interesting to see if they do to look at kind of some younger players and some newer players and try and put that in. If that was the case, I would probably say that is Ellie's opportunity there to try and grab if she can. Um, but the wicket keeping stakes in this country, especially within the England squad already, seem to be quite strong so it's going to need a, a really good year from Ellie to kind of probably break through into that team especially to displace Amy Jones Definitely but one other player in the Thunder squad that does have England on is Emma Lamb when she was available for the Thunder last year fantastic in both formats and then even more even better when she had that England shirt on what did you make of her yeah. 2022? Uh, now I've been saying for years that Emma Lamb is probably going to be England opener for years and years to come. I think she is one of England's great openers we've got. I think she's going to become even better. You know, when you look at last year, the three games she played, it was about kind of 200 odd runs, uh, kind of ridiculous, uh, ridiculous. I think I've got it down somewhere. It's kind of like a, at 70 ones, I think she was going at, at the opening. And, you know, that just set a massive platform up for Thunder every time she was playing. And I think, you know, her, um, alongside Georgie Boyce last year it was a brilliant opening partnerships that they, were, that they were completing. And again, I think she'll just go from strength to strength. I think at the point that she is available for us, she's going to be great this year again, Hafanda. You touched on Georgie Boyce there. She's now obviously left the club. How big of a hole is that to fill? I think that is going to be quite a big hole. Um, certainly her opening partnership with Emma was great last year. Um, the top order has always been slightly fragile. It'd be interesting to see what they choose to do this year, um, how they choose to change the, the batting order around to accommodate for her. Um, but I, I, she is going to be a big hole. I can see that being a big hole. But saying that, there are a couple of players 
um, that I do think probably could take that spot for her and be quite strong. Good stuff. And we'll just take a look at the bowling department from last summer. Alex Hartley, leading wicket taker for you guys and 50 other stuff. How important is her experience in this side? Uh, I think she brings wealth of experience to the side. Um, but not only on the pitch, I think also off the pitch. And yeah, she brings that enjoyment to the team, I think, as well. The mm -hmm. team realise, you know, yes, you've got to play hard. You've got to work hard. You've got to work for everything you want to do. But also you can have a bit of fun as well, you know. Let's face it. We we we've all seen Al around on either on the pitch or kind of in the media. She she likes to have fun, and I think that comes through on the team. Um, with her, you know, her performance last year was great. You know, the performance against Safi Stars at six for twenty four. You know, that was a magical innings watching that bowling, and you could see it did lift the team and just kind of you know, brought out the best in the players on that day. We were unlucky in the game itself, how it finished. But um, I do think she will be uh, a big, a big, uh, a big help again to the team this year. Definitely, and other bowlers, Laura Jackson and Hannah Jones, integral across both formats. Yeah. What did you make of those two and them as well going forward this summer? I think they're they're underrated. Actually, I think they they often go, you know, by the by. You know, people look at the Van der Squad and they see Kate Cross, Sophie Eccleston, you know, Alex Hartley, and then they don't kind of often look at Hannah Jones. Hannah Jones seems to always be able to you throw the ball to Hannah Jones and she seems to pick up that wicket breaking partnership and she's able to do that every time. Laura Jackson is brilliant. I love Laura Jackson. Like last year, um in the Charlotte Edwards Cup, there was two brilliant in swing and slower balls that she did to get rid of um, Nat Silverbrunt and Lauren Winfield Hill. And quite frankly, I defy anybody to watch them and not say that they were two of the best deliveries you will see. It was just, they were wonders to watch. And I do think this could be Laura's year, I reckon. Fingers crossed it could well be. Just yeah. one more point we'll touch on for the season. We mentioned how they did fund as a whole struggle, just the three wins across both formats. How do they go about, well, first of all, increasing that number and then pushing for high honours up the table? I think for them to increase, I think they need to look at the kind of coercive game uh, as one. As I said before, they either seem to be able to be really good in the field or really good with the bat. They don't seem to be able to combine them both during games. I think that is a big key thing they need to look at. They also need to look at, not there's a tendency last year to be getting bowled out before the end of an innings. They need to be looking at that again, you know, playing the full innings, working that through. Um, and I think you know, to, to get stronger this year, I think they have made some very clever choices in their selections, which I know we'll come on to. Um, and I think they're. <laughs> The way to, to put it together will probably be getting that early win, building on that early win, and consistently going through it. I think the way they've changed the format of the two competitions this year will help them um, because I think they are going to be playing all the, obviously all the oppositions rather than just select few like they were doing last year. And I think that will help them build some confidence at times as well. Yeah, you referenced the signings they have made and they are three players. The fund of contracts and the new ones used to be rolled out, but to start with the incomings, Naomi De Tony, Femos, and then probably the headline pick in Tara Norris. Yeah. What is your first reaction when with those three coming into the side? I think there's some brilliant choices there and actually some really good steals from uh, our team. You know, getting Tara Norris from the Vipers is going to be brilliant to help to lead that attack. I think Tara and Laura together are going to do a brilliant job leading that attack. Um, and Tara, obviously, with that kind of international experience she's just had, obviously, she's just been at the WPL and at a fair break. You know, first fight in the WPL was from Tara. Was from Tara. I think she, she knows what she's doing. She's got that experience and she's going to bring that little bit of extra to them. Um, Fee Morris, I think, is 
going to be a great another all rounder for them. She's going to she's going to solidify that middle order for them that sometimes could be weak. And also, she gives you another option. She's got great balls. She you know, great flight that she can put on them as well. Um, so I think she's going to be right there. And Naomi Tani, I'll be honest, didn't see a lot of her last year in some races. From what I hear from talking to other people, she's got brilliant, uh, brilliant technique. So she's going to come in. She's going to kind of attack the ball and strengthen that top order again. And I think what will be interesting to see as well is whether or not Thunder gain um, DeAndre Dotting back. Now, there's nothing being, con- nothing being confirmed at the moment, but looking at the fact that she's going to be coming over playing for the Manchester Originals in the 100, I think she'll probably stay with Thunder as well at points to build up that. And again, that international experience that she brings just helps to lift and boost the team. Without a doubt, before we go into the other contracted players by funding themselves, you mentioned international experience there. We've also got Sophie Eccleston and Kate Cross at the club as well. You imagine they want to be playing a bit in the build-up to the Ashes in particular. Just We've touched on it with Alex Hartley already in the experience factor, but these two have the added quality too as well. How important are they to the side? I think, mean, you know, the, anytime you bring in senior internationals like Alex, um, like Sophie and Kate, is just is always going to lift your team. Um, you know, Sophie can just do you know both roles for you. She can be equally attacking. Also, you can she can hold up an end. You know, last year five for fifteen in the Charlotte Edwards Cup was just it's just a match change. In the moment you get a bowler of that caliber that can make that change, you know, it's going to be wonderful. Kate brings all that leadership skills with her as well. You watch in the field. So she'll be supporting Ellie. All the time discussing changes, what's you know, best plans of attack and everything. I think both of them there is going to be wonderful. I always say, with Under, I say you've got you know, there's the big five. There's Kate, there's Sophie, there's Emma, there's Ellie, and there's Alex. Those big five there. Whenever you've got any of them in the team, you know you've got experience and you've got that extra something that's going to move the team on and it's going to boost them up. Without a doubt, we'll just quickly touch on those other contracted players by the funder, Ellie Freckled, Hannah Jones, Laura Jackson, and then one player we haven't talked about so far, Phoebe Graham, as well as Tara Noss as well, which we have mentioned. But for Phoebe Graham, one player we haven't touched on upon, as I said, but another integral part of that bowling attack for the funder. Yeah, great. And it was great coming over from um, the Northern Diamonds a couple of years ago, coming down to it, coming down to us at the funder. Again, another really solid performer, you know, gives it all. And actually, when she's in the team, you can see, you know, some great deliveries from her and some great ones. So I think Phoebe would be great um, on that one. I think another one probably to watch out for, I don't know if you've got, got her on your list, is Liberty Heap. Now, she had a wonderful under-19 World Cup. And I think if you watch the attacking way she plays, at the top of the order, in the middle order, depends where Funder choose to batter this year. She is going to be something very special there and something to watch out for. I think I can agree with that one too. I remember her performances from that World Cup and you did generally get off on the edge of your seat stuff and really exciting. But one other under-19 player you've got in the squad is Sarah Smale. She yep. probably struggled to keep with Freckled there, but another top-quality young batter coming through the system for you. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And as you say, yeah, she might. She will she get the gloves this year? Possibly not with uh, Ellie there, but there's a chance she may there and then. But again, even if she doesn't, her attacking nature and the batting will just shore up as well. So another great sign in there. Absolutely. Let's move on to the fun bit now and some predict- predictions for the season ahead. We will start with. The Rachel Hayo Flint, how can you see that going and where do you think Funder will finish? Uh, I think we look, I want us to beat the Northern Diamonds. If we go no, if we don't do anything else, as long as we beat the Northern Diamonds, I'll be quite happy to be honest. Um, do I see us beating the Vipers? I think on our day we could, but it's gonna be tough. Personally, I'd love them to obviously go on a minute, but I think if we get top four. I'd be happy. I think if we can get to the knockout stage, it'd be even better. 
Um, but I do think the squad they built this year is going to give them enough to build them to take them up to that high. Good stuff. And then with the Charlotte Edwards Cup, the revamp format all in one group, do you see similar fo- similar optimism with that one too? I think I think that's really going to help the team this year, actually, not having the, the, the separate groups. Mm-hmm. I was never a fan of the separate groups. It was a bit strange how the groups were run together. Um, I think if we get off to a really good start in the Charlotte Edwards Cup, I think we can, we can go to finals day. I can see us at finals day. Um, I think... You know, we've got two double headers at Old Trafford kind of back to back, which is going to be great for them. I think if they can get, if they can win them, get the momentum behind them, I can see them being at finals day. I'd love them to win. I don't know. I think it'll it'll all depend on what happens on the day on finals day. But I can see it. I I can see us being there. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got a lovely core building and the youngsters coming through confident and very well. I think that's yeah, one definite there. Well, that's everything for this Thunder preview. Thank you, Jack, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching along. There'll be still more, a couple more previews to come in the coming days. But thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the season. Yeah.